Well, hello, thank you for joining us for our last uh, recap video of our read through of the book of Proverbs. Today, what Autumn and I are gonna be talking about is things that stood out to us between chapters 26 and 31. And so I've asked my good friend Autumn to join us because chapter 31, if you, if you don't know, um, one of the things it hits on is this idea of a wife of noble character. Um, and that's not really something I can provide a ton of insight on. And uh, knowing Autumn as well as I do, I know that she'll be great at giving us the insight that we need to hear about this um, and a perspective that none of the men that have been in here with me or myself can really bring. And so I'm thankful that she's joined us um, for this last section of the read through. What I wanted to do to get started is to kind of give you um, one of my the things that stood out to me, but I'm going to do that fairly brief because I really want to give Autumn the time to explain to us the last couple of chapters of Proverbs 30 and 31 and how they tie together. Um, and hoping that us as men will get some insight <laughs> as to uh, you know what it is those scriptures have for us, not just for Roman, but actually for us as well. So if you want, you can go to Proverbs chapter 26. And, and again, I'm going to do this as, as brief as possible. Um, but the things that stood out to me were out of the first two chapters of this read through of this section. Um, chapter 26, verse 18 and 19 is the first one. It says, like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking. Okay, and I'm going to go to chapter 27 here real quick as well, because there's three main sections that, in my opinion, tie together by the way that I'm reading them. The other thing happens to be in chapter 27, verse 5. It says, better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. And then lastly, verse 17, and this is you know a verse that many uh, men hang their hat on, for good reason and it says as iron sharpens it's iron so one person sharpens another so the way that i kind of see these three texts is this idea that when we see an issue with somebody um, sometimes we avoid the sit down face to face and say so so can you help me understand this because it really rubbed me the wrong way and and it, it, it hurt me a little bit but maybe i misread it so i just want to give you a chance to kind of tell me what was going on there absolutely um and instead, we'll stand at a distance and shoot like a flaming arrow, see how it's responded to. And if it's received, we're like, great, they got my passive aggressiveness, right? But if it's not, then we're like, oh, I was just kidding, you know, and we play that game. And, and, and no progress is made whatsoever. And um, I didn't know poor this. Poor way to set up boundaries. It's very poor. Very <laughs> bad, very bad. Yeah. Um, but this hidden, or this um, open rebuke versus hidden love, better than mm -hmm. hidden love. Um, the idea that it it is better to sit down and have that conversation which i would suggest is actually communicating love correct mm -hmm. if it's with somebody that you have a close relationship with yeah. you want to work through things right and so um you know i don't want to shoot an arrow towards my wife and hope she picks up what i'm trying to say yeah, i want to sit say. down and ask the questions right yep. um and then the the last thing was the iron sharpens iron which you know, when you look at forging steel, it's hammers, it's heat. Um, it's if it was if it was a person, that's very painful, right? And I think, my goodness, if uh, I'm in close relationship with a friend or my wife, my spouse, right? Um, that relationship is valuable to me enough that I want to continue to change and become more who God's made me to be, right? Yes. The calling that I have as a man to be a, a, a first off a son, a child of God, and then in my specific situation, a husband and a father, I want to be better at that every day, right? And uh, the only way that, that I can do that is submitting to Him and then also receiving correction, mm -hmm. which sometimes hurts, but on the other end, I'm sharper you know, in the, in the example given out of that text. So and that's the example is too, that God uses the other people in our lives to give that from him. Yeah. Right. So the potter and the clay, the, the iron, it's all these imagery of transformation and change. And that change does come through relationships. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. And I, and I remember in premarital counseling, um, when Donna and I would sit with Harry 
and talk. I remember one of the things he talked about is understanding how God uses your wife to communicate to you right. some of direction for you. Right. As, as she loves you, some of that's going to be difficult conversations and some of it's going to be you know, calling you out on things, which I know I need. I don't like it. Nobody likes this. Which for women, that's like, like a trust thing. So okay. I can lose Joe's trust so quickly if I don't take that very seriously. Okay. Like if I just speak all the words that come to my head <clears throat> and I don't have any self-control or I am the flaming arrow right. and I'm passive aggressive, I lose my chance to, to allow God to hmm. speak in and through me in his life and because He's he's gonna mm-hmm, and walk away. Yeah, you know, yeah. if there's not that trust relationship. And earning trust back is is a doable thing, but my gosh, it takes a lot of time. Right. I think many of us know that from experience. You know, we've broken trust with people we're close with, and it takes a long time to earn that back. And right. I would suggest it's worth it, specifically in a marriage relationship, right? right? Um, but uh, it's it's not easy. Um, as I I. You know, hand things over to you. I, w- I wanted to, to share a real quick story um, about something that meant a lot to me out of um, Proverbs chapter 31. And it actually, um, it wasn't a moment where I was reading through it and had a revelation. It's not one of those types of a stories. It, it goes back to when my wife and I were dating. And Donna and I were in a Bible study together with a group of her friends. These weren't people I knew at all or whatnot. Um, and we we're at this Bible study, and uh, I grabbed my Bible. Um, I don't know where it was pre- previous to that that she got her hands on it, but she she did um, because I grabbed my Bible and there's a bookmark in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not studying Proverbs in this Bible study. That's mm-hmm. not at all what we were doing. I don't right. remember what we were doing, to be honest, but we weren't studying Proverbs. But I see this bookmark, so I grab it and I flip it open, and there's a note in there from Donna to me letting me know that this is what she wants to be for me one day. So sweet. I love it. And it's like, for all the times that husbands and wives fall short of being what the other person needs from them, Mm -hmm. right? To know that in the the worst times that that's where my wife's heart is, Mm -hmm. okay? Which doesn't always translate to actions. I'm speaking from my own experience, right? Like, I have this heart towards her because of Jesus. Right. And it doesn't always translate to the proper action. But to always know that her heart is to want to be that for me. That's so I'll good. never forget it. Speaking of Donna, I was going to ask her if I could borrow her cowboy boots today. And I <laughs> forgot. So, oh, so Corey could so zoom no, in on those? No like cowboy he did. boots today. No cowboy boots. She does have. We bought our, cow, we bought our cowboy boots together uh-huh. uh, down in Nashville. I remember that was a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd like to hand it over to you. Um, sure. If you would uh, and, and do your thing with, with those couple of areas. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for inviting Mm -hmm. me. And Proverbs 30 and 31 is kind of like the end cap to Proverbs. So it is a change in tone quite a bit. And so whenever I'm studying scripture, I do the who, what, when, where, and why. Okay. And when you do that, you're really doing exegesis. So you're studying in depth. And um, when you look at Proverbs 30, it's a change of who. And it goes, this is King Agur. Now we don't have King Agur anywhere else in scripture. So scholars kind of fight over who he was. Was he a neighboring king? Or was he um, another pseudonym that Solomon has? Or was he interested in an imaginary king? The tone changes a lot. So in all the other Proverbs, it's like, listen to me, I'm the smartest guy on the planet. (laughs) That's Solomon. And then it changes to, I'm not as smart as God. So is this a change in Solomon's position and his understanding of who he is in relation to God okay or is it another king okay and so we're not really quite sure maybe it's a king that Solomon learned from that would be interesting right? yeah that would Neighboring be king. absolutely but the big picture of Proverbs 30 and I'm just going to do big overview is watch out for a calloused heart um, when you start planning sin that's a sign that your heart is calloused and um, keep honest and keep away from sin and the big I'm not as smart as God. And we should okay. have that attitude that we're not okay. as smart as God. And um, the interesting thing is verse 4 is very prophetic. It says, Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in the cloak? And who has established all the ends of the earth? And what is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Hmm. 
Exclamation point. <laughs> Exclamation point. And so, um, you know, obviously they don't know about Jesus back then. So um, it's pretty, pretty prophetic when you look at that verse. Okay. And it's obviously saying, putting us in our place. Like it's, it, God is the one that, that teaches us all these things um, and guides us. So, and he's the one that reveals things that aren't known to us. Okay. And that's really important. So now if we transition to Proverbs 31, we have a new king, and it's King Lemuel. Okay. Which, if you translate that, is devoted to God. Really? So, hmm. now, we don't know who this king is. So there's okay. a mystery. I love mysteries. So yeah. you get to search out, <laughs> who is this? Right. And so scholars like to fight about that, too. Of course. But uh, many scholars think it was Bathsheba that is speaking here because it is actually the mom that is speaking to the son okay and king lemuel is solomon but by a different name so okay. prince has many names see okay. Okay. artists have many all these artists have different names okay so solomon is going by a different name and this pseudonym was actually given to and we do know solomon called himself different things okay but this was actually um probably given by bathsheba to Solomon as devoted to God. Okay. My son devoted to God. Okay. So when you read Proverbs 31 from that place, it takes a much different connotation because now it's a mom speaking to her son about all the characteristics she wants to see in the woman he will marry. Okay. So if you have ever thought, my mom's never going to be satisfied with who else. <laughs> it's for good reason. <laughs> you know, so Proverbs 31 is a, a chapter that many women kind of avoid because they feel like they can't measure up to it. Right. And they can't all at the same time, most okay. of the time. You know, so we're going to see seven virtues that Proverbs 31 woman okay. embodies throughout her lifetime. Maybe not all in one day. Right, right. And we're going to see what this mom wants for her son, okay. Solomon. Okay. Now, even bigger, if you can follow me on this one, this is really important. This is, if you go back to Proverbs 1, Solomon teaching his son about an utterance or a prophecy, depending on the translation. Okay you hear, or a song. So that the Masao in Hebrew is utterance, prophecy, or song. And different translations okay. translate it different ways. So is God speaking through Bathsheba to Solomon and talking about what is a woman that you should be looking for? What are the characteristics? We right. all write down that list. What, what are right. our, What's our bucket list, right? right. right. And the check, most, maybe women do that more than guys <laughs> do, but <laughs> you write that bucket list and, and you're looking for those things. And Joe's preaching about that in, in these next weeks and okay. talking about who we're gonna become. And so it is, like Donna said, these are the things I, I want she desires to that. shoot for. I wanna become <laughs> these things, but it isn't a, you know, were these things right when we get married? Well, and, and <laughs> it's interesting because when mm -hmm. you had mentioned Bathsheba, what is Bat? What, if people know some of the Old Testament, right? right? So, what is Bathsheba known for? Right. She's known for sleeping with King David outside of the bounds of her current marriage. Maybe not by her own volition. That's true. He saw her right. and he called her to him, right? So yeah. all the things she's learned in her life and what she wants to be different mm -hmm. for her son, she's teaching Solomon. And now if you go further, Solomon by now in the 900s, which, you know, we have, it was probably written 970 to 931 BC. Okay. So we don't know exactly, but I think we can guess he's reading, writing to his son after he's already not done these things things yeah. he's and already I, I feel walked like, away from that i feel like that gives us like as parents those mm -hmm. of us that are parents um and really anybody because if you're pursuing a relationship for an eventual spouse and whatnot you know your your track record doesn't define you okay um it can affect you mm -hmm. <clears throat> it affects an outcomes uh, many outcomes right. of, of some sort right um but just because you have a track record that you may or may not be proud of doesn't mean that God can't, A, use you, and B, use you to bless someone else. People right? can learn and from so, what you did wrong yeah, versus exactly. what you did right. Yeah. It's a harder thing exactly. to do with your kids, but it's necessary. <clears throat> right. Like, learn from my mistakes. Right. <laughs> exactly. Please. So just to review, this is probably Bathsheba. 
talking to her son Solomon. Okay. And now Solomon's telling his son what his mom told him. Okay. The wisdom his mom taught him. And the wisdom was the why would be um, a desire for him to find a godly woman and a woman that he would treasure, that he would treasure like they're more valuable than rubies okay. and give her that, that honor. And so we talked a lot about honor last weekend. So, so the where is Israel, the Jewish kingdom. So when you think about the Jewish kingdom, women are not treasured. Right. They're property. The only value they have in society is to bear children. And they're pretty much abused. So this is very countercultural, what Bathsheba is talking about to her son. She's encouraging him to find a woman that actually goes against these three lies that you are property, that you only have value in um, childbearing, and that um, you don't have dignity. It speaks to a woman being like disposable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which is so foreign in our culture to think that way. So think, it would be very uh, radical to have this Proverbs 31. Back then. Yeah, I mean, wow. we've been reading in Bible recap through the Bible and it's <clears throat> brutal, right? I mean, a lot of you are like, what am I reading? Mm -hmm. And then you just want to get to the New Testament really, really fast yeah. because it's like it's <laughs> Matthew here pretty yet? rough. <laughs> I'd give for the whole genealogy at this point in the <laughs> yeah, beginning of Matthew. <laughs> which is going to be, it's going to be a lot of genealogies because we're going to bounce back and forth a lot because it's straight through. Right. So um, the seven virtues that, that she ex kind of embodies, which you've heard taught so many times, okay. is dignity, which is this idea that she has value just innate value from God okay. given to her. Patience, um, diligence, generosity, courage, wisdom, and devotion. And you see all that even when she's buying and selling in the marketplace, which would have been unheard of. Okay. So she's, she's actually doing commerce. She's doing business. Um, this is not a normal thing. The marketplace was exclusively for men? Well, in that time, it was not normal for women to buy and sell property or do anything okay. like that. Nothing transactional in that way. So I'm sure okay. she'd have to go buy food and things like that, but right. it would be very limited. When you look at Proverbs 31, she's doing bigger things okay. than what a normal okay. Jewish woman would be doing. So um, I'll just read a couple of the verses that kind of come against these lies. So first of all, it says, The sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance from his mother, taught him, Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. And it, it actually says at one point, Oh, son of my womb, what are you doing? So in other words, Where is that she one? was probably, Listen, my son, listen, my son of my womb. In a different translation, it says, What are oh, you doing? Oh, verse 2 there. Okay. Yeah. And then verse 3, verse 2 and 3. Got it. So she may have been talking to him at a time where he was, you know, going off the path she wanted him okay. to be on. And so, and it goes into, don't drink wine. That's not for you. You're a king. Use your power for good, not evil. I said that to my boys when they were growing up. Use your power for good, mm -hmm. not evil. Mm -hmm. Your leaders, use your power for good. And that's what she's saying. You're a leader. You're king. Wine isn't for you. You, you need to stay sober-minded so okay. that you can lead. Um, and just go after trying to rescue the oppressed is what she's saying and seek out justice for those that are only and this is injustice. all like verses one through nine specifically those are one through nine okay that's where all this stuff lies it looks nine like. says speak up and judge fairly <clears throat> defend the rights of the poor and needy mm -hmm. so she has a really high goal for him and his purpose mm -hmm. and so it is proverbs 31 we think maybe is just for women but it it actually is very much for men. Yeah, so, and that's seeing that. really important. It's like a mom's desire okay. for her son. So, and then all these lies are being combated. A wife of noble character, in verse 10, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. See, women weren't thought to have value. It, it was just childbearing. And so here the trust that they had was valuable. Okay. And it, it, it was confidence in her, you know, was very important. And so that, that 
the Ruby's idea is, is amazing when you think about it, right. just based on the the value women were given. Okay. And and so here um, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now during that time, because Eve was the one that brought sin into the world, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times that was thought to be women were evil. And so even throughout Proverbs, you can see a lot of verses where the women were maybe the downfall of the men. So the, and so this is saying, this is an opposite of that, a juxtaposition that, yes, there maybe are women that are going to lead you away, but this is a woman that is actually going to bless you. So yeah. that's interesting that you brought that up because, I mean, if anything, nowadays people will joke about Eve being the one, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you know, you you started this whole thing, right? Right. But that was a legit thought back then that the women, that Eve was the problem. Eve was the problem. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, Eve was the problem. So, and here you go. She considers a field and buys it. That's, you know, that that is a permission her husband gave to her. Okay. That wouldn't be something she could just do on her own. That's verse 16. 16. Okay. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Out of her earnings. Hmm. So when we find out later that she's weaving and, you know, and making beautiful garments of purple. And, you know, so we see all that purple is, is royalty. So she's, right. you know, there's a little hint and a nod at she's the daughter of the king, right? Um and then in verse 25, she's clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Other translations say love is on her tongue, okay. which faithfulness and love a lot of times are, are in, in between. So is it wisdom twice or is it love? You know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's just different nuances of a Hebrew word. Okay. Um, and I think love, to be honest, I like better. Okay. Because a lot of things can be on our tongues, and we really want love to yeah. be on our tongue. Even right. if, back to your verses, we're correcting somebody, we want it to be correction yeah. in love. Yeah, that's not like a blanket uh, permission to just go right. after people. <laughs> right. You know, but right. to lovingly do that, correct? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and then it says, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. And so... You know, I think, again, we a lot of times women cringe at Proverbs 31, and they're like, well, sometimes I watch Netflix for a whole day, yeah. you know? Right. <laughs> like, right. So, therefore, I'm not a Proverbs 31 woman. Joe actually said to me when he found out I'm teaching, I'm like, you're such a Proverbs 31 woman. I, like, rolled my eyes. I'm like, no, I'm... I'm not. You live with me. You know I'm not. I was not just all laying the on the couch yesterday. I was you know? just, <laughs> you know, so like, don't do that to yourself as a woman. And okay. men don't, you know, don't necessarily think your wife's going to embody these characteristics 24 right. 7. It's really God that's the hero in this because okay. we find out that the reason she has all these characteristics is because she follows God. Okay. And the wisdom she gets is from God. It's the only way the only way and so if she can have any of these characteristics any day it's because the Holy Spirit's inside of her and Got she's it. you know she's following God so her children arise and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her I you know I have to say because when I was looking over this again you know her husband also and he praises her um, I can't I can't speak well enough of my wife. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to say this the right way. I don't do it enough, right? Like, there's so many things I admire about Donna and want for her and see in her. Um, she needs to know that. Even if she might not receive it well in the moment, like, you're supposed to say that, you're my husband, or, you know, whatever it is, right? But that should not hold me back ever from blessing her, reminding her who she is. Mm -hmm. And as for those of you that are husbands out there, I see that in here. I see that we we need to speak well of, assume the best of, and pray blessings over and not just be like, yeah, my wife's great, but not tell her that. Mm -hmm. Like she needs to hear that. So, you know, I, I heard in your voice humility when you said Joe said you are this woman, right? And I think that's a great way to receive compliments. Um, 
but also what I've learned is you got to receive a compliment, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not easy. I did easy. in the end. I said, <laughs> yeah, eventually, thank, thank right? you, honey, and <laughs> right. I gave him a kiss. <laughs> right. And, and, but it's like, uh -huh. you know, we've, right. you know, regardless of how things are received, Scripture's saying this is something we ought to do. Right. And to, right. man, praise yeah. her. Yeah, I mean, I think nothing more that you're, you want as a mom and a wife than grace. You know, okay. especially once you're a mom, you know, right. you just, you do want the grace for the times you don't have those virtues because you didn't get enough sleep the night before. Right. And so for him to say that, what I took away from it is he sees my overall heart's intent, like Got Donna it. said. And Got that it. means that helps me actually to live under that grace, which okay. is so needed. And it gives me so much. So, um, I, I think Proverbs 31 honestly has gotten a bad rap, so I'm not going to roll my eyes at it anymore. So Joe can okay. tell me that, and I'm going to take it for what it is. Okay. And I, I hope other women will too, and I hope men will see it like, oh gosh, this is, this is actually, if you're not married, this is actually for me of what my mom hopefully wants for me and what okay. this wise woman wanted for her son. And this is a good list of bucket lists that I see these qualities in a woman before I choose to marry her. And then if you are married, just praising your wife when you do see those and encur right. encouraging that and right. supporting her when you don't see them because probably she didn't get enough sleep. So yeah. <laughs> feed the baby a bottle that night, right. just like try to help out, <laughs> you know, oh whatever my. you need to do. Yeah. So one last one is charm is deceptive and beauty is, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be prayed, praised. Um, I'm super glad my boys chose women that love God and, and follow Him. And that's what we hope for all of you, that you, you, right. choose, you do choose that those virtues. Um, but mostly also for the women, we hope you fight against the lies of the culture, whatever you're getting messages about the lies that, that um, you don't have value, that you don't have dignity, and they don't have worth, um, a part of what you do. Your worth comes innately from God, yeah. and whether or not I'm actually embodying all those characteristics in any one day, I do know my worth comes from God, and and He is the hero in right. my life. And and when I am able to do it, it's because I'm I'm following Him. I'm spending time with Him. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah. Well, thank you very much yeah. for that. That was that was very uh, very helpful. And I'm not just saying that because we're being filmed. That was uh, insightful to me. So I really appreciate that. Um, as we look through this text and as we've gone through the book of Proverbs, there's a lot of wisdom in there, as we know, and as we've learned. Um, my prayer for you all that are watching this is that you don't ever stop trying to learn that, that you don't ever stop seeking wisdom, which is what Proverbs tells us to do, to mm -hmm. seek wisdom, that as a man and, and as a woman that... Um, you pursue the things that God desires for you, that you treat each other well with respect, you lift each other up. And that really the whole idea of, as you mentioned in a couple different ways, um, Autumn, is, okay, we are looking for these qualities in mm -hmm. our future spouse potentially, but also as the sermon series we're, we're being taken through right now um, by Joe is, that we're also becoming these things. Mm -hmm. So we're not just trying to find them, but we are trying to become those things for somebody else. So I see my responsibility as a parent, I'll close with this, um, to teach my children what it looks like for their future wife mm -hmm. and for their future husband, but I also want them to understand what it looks like for them to become these things. Absolutely. Are you the person you are looking for is looking for mm -hmm. are you becoming that person right and so we thank you for being a part of this uh this video we thank you for being a part of the proverbs read, read through if you've been um we encourage you to to like the page to i can't remember what it is i'm sorry corey but all the things to to subscribe subscribe, subscribe. smash the button dave said last time <laughs> Um, whatever that is. And uh, we just are glad you were here with us and we pray it was a blessing for you all. So thank you very much. Have a great day.